Good morning, everyone. I'm truly honored to be addressing this distinguished gathering today. Uh, thank you, ET, for giving us the opportunity. Uh, it, it was a privilege sharing the dais with uh, Honorable Jagdambika Palsar, Madam Suman Sharma, Vibha Dhawan, and uh, Ms. Neena Fanton. The subject that I've chosen today is a question to all of you. How many of you, how many of you feel you are responsible for people's dreams? By show of hands, please. How many of you feel you're responsible for people's dreams? Come on, guys. Like, this is a responsible uh, audience, uh, it seems. Uh, India's in safe hands. But I'm going to start with the story of a boy who was born in a small village in rural India in 1950s. He was the son of a farmer, as most of India was at that point of time. India hardly had any public infrastructure. Villages didn't have any. No roads, no electricity. Schools were at a distance. The literacy rate was a dismal 18%. People didn't have aspirations. But this boy really wanted to make it big, wanted to study. No matter what the situation was, no electricity, using oil lanterns. He lost his father when he was 13. Life was not easy. But this boy topped every class, every school he went to. Got into a great engineering college. Cracked the prestigious UPSC examination. Served in the government, retired after 37 years of service. But this, this boy lived his dreams. But to me, he was an exception. Just one out of a million who could cut through. The majority of his peers were left behind. I'm talking about India of 1950s and 1960s. India was a poor country, was barely trying to stand on its feet after 300 years of colonial rule. Let me tell you, people did not dream back then. And even if they did, even if they did their dreams hardly mattered. I know this story very closely because the boy that I spoke about is my father. But the talk is not about him. The talk is about his friends, his relatives, his peers, and their future generations who were left behind. Fast forward 75 years. We are standing in 2023. India is now the fifth largest economy. We've overtaken the United Kingdom. Ironically, in the 75th year of our independence. Everyone is calling us the next growth story and the lone shining star. But the big question to ask is, has our growth been equitable? And the answer is clearly no. There is a clear India versus Bharat divide, which is very evident in our country. The privilege, like, like all of us sitting in this room, have access to everything that we need. But Bharat doesn't have it. They don't have the resources. But this time, Bharat has dreams. And Bharat is staring at us to fulfill their dreams. They are one of us. There are people. And we will have to take responsibility of their dreams. This is what our prime minister calls Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas. Let me try and explain this further. In a recent report by Morgan Stanley titled the new India, why this is India's decade. So in its report, uh, Morgan Stanley has said that India will be the fastest growing economy of this decade. India would add 25% of the world's GDP in this decade and also become the third largest economy by the end of it. But if you look at all the reports, all the publications on India's growth, they'll point to one thing that India needs to tap its demographic dividend if we have to live this dream. For me, there are, there are four pillars on which India's dream is standing. First, 
First, building digital infrastructure and financial inclusion. I think we've done an amazing job when it comes to financial inclusion through India Stack, the UPI, the OCAN, account aggregator network. India today accounts for just 4% of the global economy, but accounts for 40% of digital transactions globally. Second, building public infrastructure. There's been a massive infrastructure build out in the last 10 years in the country. Roads, ports, airports. We are building infrastructure like we had nothing built before. You cannot go to any part of the country without seeing a large infrastructure project being setting up. They say, uh, this is important, they say 60% of world's infrastructure in 2030 has not been built today. So we are going to be building a lot of infra. Third is about social infrastructure, building schools, colleges, government is doing a good job, more, more needs to be done, done there. The fourth pillar is, increase, is increasing energy access and transition to renewable energy and that is where the role of people in this room comes in. Right? Energy access is bringing people in energy net and increasing the per capita power consumption. Energy access is a sign of prosperity. It is really the center of country's development. Without energy access, India is going to miss the bus. The second, the second uh, important aspect of energy access and energy transition is the energy transition to renewable energy. Transition to renewable energy is about energy independence and is about reducing our, our vulnerability to volatile global fuel price market that we have been struggling for last 75 years. And this is something that we would need to do if we really want to become an at become Atmanirbhar, what our Modi ji says, Atmanirbhar Bharat. As a community, we have achieved a lot. We are the fourth largest producer of RE power in the world with 120 gigawatts of RE capacity installed by December 2022. We produce the cheapest solar power in the world. Finally, there is something that we've, beaten, we've been able to beat China in, right, in terms of cost, so we should be really proud of it. But there's a lot to achieve. Let's look at what we have to achieve, uh, achieve in the next decade. While energy transitions have taken place in a lot of countries, India is the only country where energy transition and energy access are happening parallelly at this scale. Our energy demand will increase anywhere between three to four times in the next decade and RE will have a 50% share in that. We imported oil worth $120 billion last year, right? which is a huge drain on our, on our forex reserves. We have to reduce our dependence on, on import and go RE. Only 8% of Indians use cars and only 3% use air conditioning. India's per capita consumption is going to increase by 60% and bulk of it should come from RE. While India has achieved 100% rural electrification, still 50% of household consumption is met by wood, cow dung and other, other biofuels. Anywhere between 30% to 50% of India's vehicles are going to be electric by 2030. But the onus is on us to make them really green by giving them green power like their green number plates. And, and the next one is really important. India is home to 39 of the world's 50 most polluted cities. Right? In Delhi, residents, like we, we are all in Delhi, in Delhi, residents lose nine, nine years of their life expectancy due to pollution. We have to reverse that. We have to power the hard to abate sectors like cement, steel, fertilizers with green power and green fuels like hydrogen. In the NDC of the Paris Agreement, 50% of India's requirements would come from renewable energy sources by 2030. Now that would mean going to somewhere between 450 to 500 gigawatts of solar by the end of this decade. While that is very ambitious, but let me tell you, it's not going to be enough. So my message to, to this community is that we are in a seminal decade. We are going to add more power generation capacity in this decade than we have done in the last 75 years. 
we have a chance to make history. Our work will not only lead to inclusive growth, but we will, but will also help in fulfilling the dreams of billions of Indians that are staring at us. The third, I, I, and third is something that I really, really uh, feel about, is that we don't celebrate as a community, we don't celebrate our work enough as building infrastructure, as they call it, is not cool enough. But we should be really proud of it. Before I sign up, I, I really want to read out a few lines from an old Hindi song which inspires me to work for nation building uh, whenever I hear it. It's, it's, called a, it's from a movie called Hum Hindustani, released after independence, but, but it's really relevant, relevant even today. Uh, it says, Humko kitne taj mahal hai aur banane, kitne aur ajanta humko hai sajane, abhi palatna hai ruk kitne daryaon ka, kitne parvat raho se hai aur hatane, naya khun hai, nai umange, ab hai nai kahani, hum Hindustani, hum Hindustani. Let's build India together. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, ED, for giving us the opportunity.